Hello, hello! I'm Limerence. This video is the sequel to my VTuber drawing video and will be about rigging the model. Fair warning in advance, I'm still quite new to rigging, so I make a lot of mistakes. I've tried to point them out here, so you can do better than me. Also, I use the free version of Live2D, so I'll be keeping my rig quite minimal. This video assumes that you know very little about Live2D. Like before, let's look again at the pieces. I decided early on that I wanted to make a quick, simple model without left, right, up, down turning. Although separating pieces like this can let you rig head angles, this video will not include those for simplicity's sake. With this in mind, I merged some layers together to facilitate a simpler rig. Here is the updated piece sheet. Aside from the head, it's mostly the same, but fewer pieces make a big difference when rigging. Before we begin, some useful functions I don't go over include clipping ID, draw order, and guidelines. Maybe I can talk about them some other time. But for now, I'll first talk about warp deformers. Warp deformers allow you to transform your pieces in groups. You should start by making warp deformers around your largest groups. For example, a deformer for the entire model, then within that deformer, more for the head and body. This is because you cannot make a deformer that groups together multiple deformers. That's how you get this error. By making these large group deformers first, you can prepare for common movements like head turns or breathing. I like to start with the automatic mesh generator. Meshes allow you to transform your pieces individually. I select all of my pieces and use the standard preset. You can always edit the anchors on your meshes later. Also, just a note that left and right in the parameters list indicate the model's left and right, not your own. Parameters determine the movement of the pieces on your model. You can check what each parameter does by selecting the parameter palette menu and opening the parameter settings. Keyforms are like keyframes. They are starting and stopping points for movement, and Live2D will automatically generate the frames in between. More keyforms equal more work, but they'll also make your model look smoother in action. For the eye, I've chosen to make three keyforms. The rightmost keyform is eye open. I don't have to touch this. The leftmost keyform is eye close. This is what I'm editing for now. Here would be a good time to edit my art mesh, but I don't remember to do that until later. Art meshes are easiest to edit when the deformation anchors are placed at the edges of the individual pieces, like this. You can also quickly add in more anchors by going back to the automatic mesh generator and changing the preset to heavy. You can probably tell, but I'm really just winging it. I repeat the process of creating keyforms on the parameter for the shadow under the eye. I use the deform path edit tool and create a line across the shadow to be able to quickly deform the whole piece, and then edit the smaller anchors after as needed. And now for the eyelid, which will cover the shadow under the lashes. Once I'm done with this eye, I do the same with the other one. I've seen some videos where they duplicate the eye instead of redoing it manually, but here I've just done it by hand. Because there are so few eye pieces, I'm only going to rig the left and right eye movement. For that, I add keyforms to the eyeball x parameter and rig from there. Please don't call me out for accidentally rigging on the brow x parameter instead of brow y. This can easily be fixed by editing the parameter ID. I rigged the flower now on the breathe and blink parameters, but I'm going to have to redo it later because I made my warp deformers in the wrong order. Now it's time to rig the mouth. I often return to Kira Omori's mouth rigging video and use her mouth shape chart. I'll link it below in the description. You can link parameters by tapping the loop. It'll link it to whatever parameter is below. You can use linked parameters for head angles and iris movement as well. Here is where I realize I messed up and have to delete my flower and body transformers and redo them. Now I start rigging the hair. You can rig the hair in as many pieces as you have patience for. I am impatient, so there goes my bangs. The side hair and the pigtails get rigged as well. My rigging here is linked, but if you wanted, you could rig the left and right sides separately. I add a rotation deformer to rotate the head at the neck. I choose the wrong parameter again here. It should be rigged to body Z. I should probably also use rotation deformers for the arms, but to keep it simple, I'm just editing the mesh. Now we get into the physics settings, which you can open through the modeling menu. Actually, I really just use the presets and edit them using trial and error if needed. The key points for physics are the input and output settings. If the parameter selected in input moves, then the parameter se selected in output will move. 
Because I didn't rig the head angles, my hair movement will just be tied to my body Z parameter. Make sure to choose your physics model settings too. I use presets for this as well. I haven't really maximized my deformer use, so here I've ended up doing some skinning. I used Saren Faye's skinning tutorial for this, which I'll link as well. She explains it a lot better than I could. I still ended up using presets mostly, but now the hair can move a little more. I'd advise only doing skinning if you have a lot of available deformers left. And that's it for this video. Live 2D can be really complicated, but I hope I pointed out the most important functions for rigging for you here. If there's anything you'd like me to clarify, or if you have any questions, please drop a comment below. Thanks for watching all this way. See you around!